What's up you guys, Tech Checker here, and I've got a review for you of the NECA Fugitive Predator. Now I have been wanting, I've had the hankering to buy a NECA Predator figure for quite some time, and when I saw this at my target, I could not pass it up. There are a few issues, a few things I'm not a huge fan of, but let's go ahead and crack this thing open and take a closer look. So first things first, a note of caution when you're pulling this figure out of the packaging. NECA seems to have uh, a new trend or tendency to, in the blister packaging, to actually have the legs and maybe even the arms poking through holes in here. And those holes, the plastic is very kind of sharp. So, in order to get this guy out, you should start at the head and pull so that he comes out this way and then pull up. Don't just rip this guy out. Otherwise, you are going to scratch the paint and you're gonna be a little bit annoyed. So once you do that, he will come out nice and safe and sound. Okay, let's talk articulation. But first, before you pull this guy out and start, you know, bending the arms and what have you, you are going to want to hit this guy with a hair dryer because especially with these uh, with these elbows and wrists, um, the paint, uh, you saw I just pulled a piece of paint off. The paint is gonna basically fuse these so that they are kind of in a locked position. So you are definitely going to want to hit these with some heat before you start bending them around. But let's go ahead and look at the articulation on this. His head is on a ball joint and he can look up about that far, which is actually pretty decent. He can get his chin almost all the way down into his chest, which is pretty good. He's able to look side to side, no real issues. My head joint is definitely kind of loose. That's a little disappointing on mine. But he's got really, really good range of motion here in his neck. I mean, that's that's just awesome. I don't believe there is any other range here or uh, articulation. I don't think the neck actually moves, but that's okay because he's got a lot of range of motion there. Moving down into the shoulders. So these shoulder pads are kind of a rubberized piece and they're attached to the top of the shoulder. So they will move out of the way, but he has a hinge in the shoulder and he can really only get his arm out about that far so that's a little bit limiting um, he can rotate that arm all the way that's good there is no upper bicep swivel but there is a swivel at the top of the elbow and there are double jointed elbows here the issue i have with these elbows is they look terrible um that just this just i mean i know that's sculpt but what were they thinking? This looks terrible. I don't I don't get it. I don't know. This just doesn't I don't recall. I haven't seen this new movie and maybe that's what their elbows look like, but there had to be a dude inside those uh costumes. So I don't I don't get it. But anyway, it does give you a good range of motion just the same. I mean, it's well over 90 degrees that he's able to bend those elbows, but I'm just not a fan of how that looks. And my gosh, I'm getting paint all over the place here. Okay, in his wrist, he has a peg joint and a hinge in his wrist. He can move his arm this far forward, or I guess curl it that far forward and curl it up that far. And that's pretty good. I'm nothing too spectacular, and there is rotation there. Um, this... Uh, I guess forearm piece does rotate uh, and we'll talk about the accessories in a bit because it's just on a peg joint and these are removable. We'll talk about that in a moment. But moving into the torso, he actually has pretty good torso articulation. There is what to, I believe to be a double ball peg in the upper torso. He's able to crunch forward that far, which is a lot. And then he's able to get that arched back about this far, which is pretty darn good. And then you move down into the waist and you basically got the same thing. And so he can curl forward quite a bit and he can arch back quite a bit. The only issue that you're gonna run into is you're gonna see this big gap there uh, in the belt, but that's okay. He can swivel at both of those joints. So he can swivel at the top one and he can swivel at the bottom one at the waist. So there's a lot of range of motion there. He can also side crunch a lot. The, the articulation on this figure uh, just for range of motion is really, really good. NECA did a great job with that. 
Moving down into the hips, he's got what I believe to be T-jointed ball hinge uh, joints. He can do the splits. How cool is that? Uh, and then he is able to kick forward. Actually, kicking forward is a little bit... Uh, actually, it's not too bad. Um, it's not quite 90 degrees. If you really force it, you can probably get it a little bit further. Kicking back is actually really quite good. You can get that leg way, way back, which is really, really awesome. There is an upper uh, thigh swivel right at the top because of that ball joint. So that it's a, uh, it's a little bit limiting, but I think it gets you exactly where you need to be. Uh, moving down into the knees, he's got double jointed knee joints. Again, there's just a lot of material here, just like the elbows. It kind of extends it a little bit further than I would like. This one doesn't look near as bad, but he has good range of motion. There is no swivel at the top of the, oh, no, at the top of the knee, it does swivel, just like just like your typical NECA figures usually have a swivel at the top of the knee or at the bottom, I guess. But he can get his knees almost all the way in half, which is pretty darn good. Moving down into the ankle, he has a double, or no, it's a single ball joint in the ankle. That's about as far back as you're going to get it. It's not bad. Um, could be better. He is able to get his foot forward that much, which is actually really quite good. And then he can swivel that ankle and he does have ankle rocker which moving it out is actually really really good that's a really big range of motion there and I, I'm actually pretty pleased with that oftentimes the uh, um, ankle pivot isn't all that great so overall the articulation even though it may not look great specifically it's they, he's got a really really good range of motion okay let's go ahead and take a look at the sculpt and paint work on this figure there are some really, really good high points, and I'm gonna say the paintwork is the high point on these figures, or on this particular figure. I think NECA did a really, really good job with all of the paintwork. You can see on his chest piece, there's really, really nice paint detail. There's some dry brushing to make this look metallic, and then you can see the little gold accents. This chest piece is just kind of a hollow, and it's not even a hollow, it's, it's just a rubbery plastic that, goes over the actual uh, body of the figure. This little flap is very, very soft. I really, really like that. In the face, I think they did a really nice job with the gold accents. It's pretty clean. You can see that this is actually a mask and you can see the, the alien's face underneath, which is pretty cool. You can see the mouth underneath, which is awesome. The hair dreadlocks, this is definitely different from the older, I guess, previous versions that I've had. Um, the one that I had that I've actually taken out is more of a rubber hose-like, whereas these are of a softer plastic, almost triangle-like things. I kind of like these a little bit better because they move out of the way a lot easier. Um, they're just a little bit softer, so I kind of like those. This shoulder um, cannon is just, it just makes me think that it's gonna break. It seems a little too delicate. Um, it is articulated, I forgot to mention that in the uh, articulation section, but it is fully articulated so you can get it positioned in lots of different ways. But I, I feel one, it's a hair small, but again, I haven't seen the new movie, so maybe that's uh, exactly accurate. Who knows? I really like these shoulder pads. They look metallic, even though it's a soft rubber. Um, I just think that they did a really, really nice job. Moving down into the arms, we already talked about the elbows and how dumb they look. I just, I don't like how long these elbows look, and it's probably because of how thin they are. These, I mean, this dude has got to start working out. I mean, I get that you're not going to have a huge amount of muscle in your in your actual elbow, but his bicep is pretty good and then all of a sudden it's just tiny. And I get it, it's probably to be able to get a uh, much better range of motion. I almost would have sacrificed the range of motion for it to not look so dumb. Um, I think that these uh, what are these called? The forearm pieces, very, very nicely done. I think it's really good. The hands are painted very nicely. Everything is painted really well. We're going to go back to the torso here. 
one issue that I have with the torso, and I wish I had my other um, Predator figure here to put side by side, but his chest to me seems far too narrow. Um, it just, he looks so lanky and that brings us down into the legs because I think the legs might just be a hair too long. It just, he's too tall in my opinion and we'll measure him up in just a second but I think he's way, way too tall. Um, I had him up against my other, uh, my other predator while I was at work and I forgot to bring him home but he is considerably taller than the other Predator figures that I have. And I don't know if that's supposed to be that way or not, but we'll talk about some of the other positives. These thigh shield pieces are amazing. They're really cool. These little rubber pieces, uh, you saw they, they do come down. They're not glued on, but that is okay with me because they stay on pretty good. Um, it actually took a fair amount for that to come down. But I just think... When it comes to the paint, NECA did an amazing job. The sculpt is great, except for he's just too tall and too lanky, and his arms are just way too spindly, and I'm not a huge fan of that. I think that they sculpted the head very, very nicely. This uh, kind of a flatter matte finish of the gray looks pretty sharp. I don't know if this little silver spot is intentional or if that was just a mistake, but it definitely, if it was a mistake, it looks still pretty darn good. So overall, I am very pleased with the way that this looks. I, I'm just not so sure about the height. All right, let's take a look at just how tall he is. I've complained about it enough. Let's actually see just how tall he is and take a look at that. He's coming in at almost eight and a half inches tall. And again, I don't have mine to compare him, but let's just put him next to a Marvel legend to give you a little bit more perspective. Maybe, I mean, you're not gonna be putting these together, but he comes in far and above, way taller than him. So if you do collect the Predator figures, this guy is gonna be way taller. I don't know if that's an issue. I'm still debating whether or not that's an issue for me when you add in the really, really thick thin, kind of disproportionate look. And if you look at him from a distance, it looks like the torso is far too tall or far too long. And maybe even the legs just look a little squatty because of it. I don't know. All right, let's go ahead and check out the accessories first. We're gonna move him just a hair out of the way. So hopefully we can get some good focus action. But he comes with these two sets of uh, knife things or blades and they will mount onto his forearms just like most of your predators typically do the one issue that i have i guess with these and we'll move him again out of the way is number one they don't all match in color and i don't know if that's really intentional but this one is far lighter move this guy all the way out this one is far lighter than this one and it's almost as though it didn't get any of the paint. So I'm thinking that might be a factory mistake because these have somewhat of a silver paint on them. Um, and they it, it's not bad. There's no shading or anything on them. So that could have definitely gone a long way if they had done like a black wash underneath to get some of these details made uh, a little more uh, pronounced. But let's uh they're kind of soft they're they're not too bad they are sharp so be careful with those but those basically just mount right on the side of these uh i guess forearm pieces and we'll throw this one in as well okay right into these slots like so and i think that looks pretty good so basically it's going to be just like that curl this in just a hair so that it looks like he's gonna kind of attack you that's a terrible pose but and you're not gonna be able to see it but I think I think those look nice um, a little bit more paint would have gone a long way I guess um, to make those look even better but he does also come with an alternate set of forearms and hands and these are, you know, they're painted very nicely. Uh, if you want, you can certainly pull these hands out 
and put them on so you can still use the forearm pieces with these alternate hands so you're not stuck with only being able to, able to have open claw hands with bare forearms you, you're not forced to do that which is nice and the really cool thing about these hands is they're very very nicely detailed these claws are really really you're not going to be able to see this but they're they're painted nicely they're very sharp each one has a slightly different uh curl to it so that's kind of cool to get that uh different look from these so i i appreciate that but let's go ahead and throw a couple of these on Basically, you're going to pull the entire forearm off, which is a little odd. I don't think we've seen that from NECA on the Predator figures. And we're going to pop this on. Oh, that's tight. All right, so we had to do that off camera because it took a lot of effort to get on there. And there you have it. Again, arms, they're really spindly. Um, they're just really thin. I don't i don't recall them being that thin Uh but maybe, we'll see when I see the movie or when I take a look at my other ones. I don't know. But he also comes with an alternate head. And I have to say, I'm, I'm torn whether or not this will be the head that I use. Let's get this to focus in. Or if I will use the masked head. I'm kind of leaning towards this one. This is really, really detailed. They did a great job. You can see the little pupils in there. Well, you guys might not be able to. Let's move the camera so that this is all in the light a little bit better. But this just looks so good. It's so detailed. The thing I like is these little mandible things are a little bit soft. So if you do catch it on something, I don't think it's going to break or anything, which is always a bit of a concern for me. But they just, they've painted the inside of the mouth. So there's some detail in there and there's actually, actually some shading. Just a really, really good job. They shaded down here. So there's definitely some different colors. Uh, color variation. I just, I think it looks great. Let's go ahead and pop that on. And hopefully it will fit on here easily on camera. And I don't break anything. Ugh. And there you have it. And I, I am actually leaning towards using this particular head instead. The only thing, again, I go back to the really thin spindly look of the uh, torso with the head, it just doesn't seem to proportionally fit right. And then you have these really, really thin arms. That's my biggest issue. And I don't, I don't know if I'm just being obtuse about it or what, but for 30 bucks, which is about what I, it's like 27 something, I think, at Target. And normally we were paying 24.99, so 25. So it's about two bucks more. But then you throw in the tax and it wound up being about 30 bucks. I don't know if this one is a must have. It's got great articulation. The paintwork is amazing. I mean, they did a great job with the paint. It's the sculpt. I'm not so sure that I like just how tall. I mean, an almost eight and a half inch figure is a little bit ridiculous. So I don't know if I can recommend that you must have this figure. It's really cool. It's a NECA figure. They always do a great job, but they may have missed the mark a little bit. Again, I need to see the movie. Maybe this particular character is far and above taller than everybody else and he's really thin. I don't know. I need to check that out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment below. Did you get this figure? Do you love it? Have you seen any of these figures at Target? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.